Hello guys, in this video you will learn how to fine-tune an open source large language model without managing any infra that is using serverless ML. Let's get started. Why do we need to fine-tune an open source large language model? Because of two reasons. The first one is because we want to increase performance. It's often the case that smaller, highly specialized, fine-tuned LLMs work better than generalist LLMs, for example, ChatGPT, using prompt engineering. So fine-tuning increases the model performance. And second, and important as well, is that the model, the final model, is smaller, which means that it's cheaper to run. And that's a very important thing, because large language models are highly parametric, they have billions of parameters, so reducing the amount of parameters really makes a difference in terms of operations and cost. So these are the two key reasons, better performance and better economics. Now, how do you implement in practice fine-tuning? This is what we're going to see right now. To start with, you need a data set of examples of input and output pairs. Input is the instructions you send to the model and output is the output you expect the model to output. Right? This data set is often built by specialists, human levelers, and collected over time. Nowadays, there are semi-automatic ways to build these data sets, like in the link that I'm going to share here, which use a powerful large language models, for example, uh, GPT 3.5, to help uh, scale the process of generating more samples. And as for any machine learning uh, model, the larger the data set, the better the model is. The higher the quality of the data set, the better the model is. So this is the first ingredient, a sample data set of questions and answers. In our case, the input contains two things, an about me section, which the user uh, uses to describe. So basically, who's the user, what he or she is looking for. Then a second part, which is the context. This is relevant context about financial news that happened recently that the model should use in order to generate the most sound financial advice. So these are the two sub-components of our input section. And then finally, the output, which, as I said, is what we expect the model to expel, to advise to the user. Now, the second ingredient that we need in order to fine-tune an LLM is to get a base LLM. Now, we're going to use open-source LLMs, and open-source LLMs can be found on the Hugging Face Models Hub. There you will find Almost any pre-trained open source LLM that has ever existed is there. So there are tons of them. In our particular case, we're going to use Falcon 7 billion, but feel free to pick another one. What we explain here and the way the code is implemented is model agnostic. Obviously, the scale matters. The larger the base model, the more expensive the fine tuning is because you need basically more powerful hardware. So 7 billion is a good choice for our problem. Now, once you have these two key ingredients, you need to write what is called a fine-tuning script. What is that? This is basically a Python script. We're going to use Python. That is going to use an open source library called TRL by Hugging Face. How does it work? It's really simple. What you do is you import what is called a trainer, a supervised fine-tuning trainer. And there you pass it, the model and the tokenizer. In this case, the Falcon 7 billion and its corresponding tokenizer. Also, you pass the training and evaluation data set that you need during fine tuning. So training data is used to adjust model parameters and the evaluation data set is used to basically make sure that the model gets better over time. And then finally, we also pass an important parameter, which are this PFT config. This PFT stands for parameter efficient fine tuning. Fine tuning is nothing new in machine learning. What is new, however, are the new techniques that are used to fine-tune models. Large language models are highly parametric, and all classic ways of fine-tuning, which involve either fine-tuning the whole model or just a very small fraction, do not work really well for large language models. And this is why, in the last months, years, there have been new techniques uh, released and researched. For example, LoRa. This stands for Low Rank Adapters. How do they work? In a nutshell, what they do is they take the large matrices, the large language models have of parameters, and decompose it using a low rank adaptation into two smaller matrices with a much smaller number of parameters. And these are the parameters that we fine tune. So basically, we reduce the dimensionality of the problem using LoRa. And then 
one step further, LoRa is what is called QLoRa. Q stands for quantize. What does that mean? It means instead of working with full precision double numbers for all the parameters in these matrices, we take 4-bit or 8-bit representations. This obviously reduces the accuracy of the model, but if you do it smartly, like in QLoRa, there is a very smart trade-off between speed and performance. So QLoRa is the method that we will use here. And then finally, you just call the dot train method. So the whole fine tuning is wrapped up very elegantly in the TRL library of having phase. Now, when you fine tune a model, it's important that you do two things. First of them is to track what's happening. So when you run a fine tuning experiment, there are a lot of parameters called hyperparameters that you set initially that you're not really sure about. So it's important that you lock the hyperparameters you use and also the performance. So what what you get are like uh, training curves. So the classic training curves that you have when you train a neural net are also here when you fine tune a large language model. So it's important that you track them using an experiment tracker. This is an external service that you need to have in your stack. And then the second component, which is really important, is the model registry. So when you finalize your fine tuning, you produce a model artifact. That is, that is a set of parameters inside the pickle file. You need to save that somewhere that somewhere is the model registry, where later on you can use it for inference. So from the model registry, our final agent that we will develop at the end is going to be able to fetch this model and use it to run inference on live data. Now, what's the infrastructure that you need to run all this? First, for the experiment tracker and model registry, we're going to use CometML. CometML is a serverless tool, which means you only need to sign up, you get your API key, and you integrate everything at the Python level. So you just run pip install cometml. The second service that we will need is a GPU. In this course, we're gonna use Beam. Beam.cloud is a serverless computing platform that lets you run Python scripts that have access to GPUs without managing. So again, it's serverless. Again, you only need to sign up for free and get an API key. And then you only pay for what you use down to the second. So these are the two pieces of infrastructure we're going to use in this course, both of them serverless. That's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to walk you through the implementation that our master chef, Paul Justin, where are the utensils, has implemented in the GitHub repository. See you there.